Tony from Greenwood Media here. Uh, so we've been doing loads of testing on one of our Photoshop and Procreate brush packs recently uh, across a load of different styles and we thought it might be helpful to somebody to see the entire process start to finish for one of them uh, with a few of the techniques explained in detail. So you don't need to use any of our packs to pick up a few things from the video but we'd love it if you check out our Attack of Liners brush pack for Procreate and Photoshop at the link below which is out now exclusively on Design Cuts. This video is roughly split into two halves. The first part goes into some detail on the techniques that are used and reused throughout the video, while the second half shows the full process start to finish with a few notes along the way. Hope you like it. One thing which is often overlooked is changing the settings on your pen. This can make a huge difference to how it reacts and can completely change how the brushes feel and can make them act more realistically. On desktop, I'm going to open up Wacom Desktop Center and customize the pen settings. The default curve is linear, but I find editing it into uh, more of a slope gives me much, much more control. The left side reacts slower to pressure, meaning I can get a much finer stroke for longer before the pressure gradually increases. Dragging the right side left means I don't have to press really, really hard to get the full thicker strokes. On iPad, go to Settings, the wrench icon top left, and then select the Preferences tab. Select Pressure and Smoothing. So the exact same principles apply. Shallow curve allows for a lighter stroke at low pressure, but thickens up quickly without pressing extremely hard. You can see now that there is nice line control in both Photoshop and Procreate. Uh, an extra tip for pressure sensitive liners is to set the brush size slightly larger than you might think. You can still get the same thin strokes, but now you can go much thicker without changing brush size if you need to. Sometimes you need a good straight line and there's a couple of tools in both Photoshop and Procreate. In Photoshop, if you hold down the shift key while you draw, you'll get a straight horizontal or vertical line depending on the direction you're drawing in. You can also tap your pen on the canvas, then hold shift and tap somewhere else to draw a line between those two points. Procreate takes this all a step further. When drawing a line, if you hold your pen at the end of the stroke, the line will magically snap into a straight line. You can also do this with curves. Same again, hold the end and Procreate will create an arc. Uh, it's also very useful for ovals and circles. The symmetry tool can save you a huge amount of time when drawing certain things, especially man-made objects that should be more precise. In Photoshop, click on the symmetry tool, the butterfly icon, and select one of the options, position it where you like, and hit enter. Now, when you draw, it's reflected on both sides of this line. If you want to move the line, click on the tool again, choose Transform Symmetry, move it to its new position and hit enter. To turn it off completely, click the tool and choose Symmetry Off. On iPad, click Settings, the wrench icon, choose Canvas, enable the drawing guide and then tap Edit Drawing Guide. Position it where you like and tap Done. Now when you draw, you'll get the symmetry effect. To move the line of symmetry, go back to Settings, Canvas, Edit Drawing Guide, move the line and start drawing again. When you're done, just disable the drawing guide. Transforms are a great way to manipulate your sketches or any part of your artwork without having to redraw everything. To do a basic transform in Photoshop, select the layer you want to use and press Command or Control T, or you can go to Edit Free Transform in the menu and you can now resize the artwork, keeping its original proportions. If you hold Shift while transforming, you can change its proportions. If you hold Command or Control, you can move the corner points independently. For even more control, in the menu go to Edit, Transform, Warp, which will give you a grid to play with. Now, as well as grabbing the corner handles, you can also grab and move the inner grid lines. And to take this a step further, I'm going to select just one area of my sketch and apply the Warp Transform, so I'm only adjusting this one part of my drawing. In Procreate, this all works very similarly. Select the Transform tool, which is the arrow icon top left, and you're given a range of options. Freeform allows you to resize ignoring the proportions. Uniform keeps the original proportions. Distort allows you to drag individual points of the bounding box. And finally, Warp gives you more control using a grid. Like Photoshop, if we use the Select tool, the S icon, and choose Freehand, we can select an individual area we want to manipulate first, switch the Transform tool, and create our new transforms. The Liquify tool is amazingly useful for tweaking your artwork. Uh, select the layer and go to Filter Liquify in the menu bar. 
There's a huge amount you can do in here, but I'll just show you a couple of useful ones. And do leave a comment below if you'd like more detailed tutorials and any individual tools in Photoshop or Procreate. The default forward warp tool, W shortcut, lets you push around your artwork like it's liquid. Uh, change the brush size to give you more control over the areas using the square bracket keys shortcuts. There are loads more settings you can change, but we'll keep it simple for now. The pucker brush, the S key, is great for shrinking down parts of the illustration, while the bloat key will enlarge them. Just hit OK, bottom right, when you're done with your edits. Procreate works similarly. Open the adjustments panel, the magic wand icon top left, and choose liquify at the bottom. Again, there's a plethora of options down here. The first one, push, is the most basic one, while pinch and expand will shrink or enlarge elements of your illustration. Clipping masks are extremely powerful ways of editing your layers. Uh, when you create a layer and clip it to the one below, only the pixels which sit on top of visible pixels on the layer below are shown. For example, in Photoshop, I have a skin color layer in the illustration will create a new layer above it. I fill it with my foreground color and then clip it to the layer below using Command or Control Alt G. You can also do this by right clicking on the layer name, not the thumbnail, and choosing Create Clipping Mask. In Procreate, it works similarly. Create a new layer above, fill it, and then tap on the layer thumbnail and choose Clipping Mask. I'll delete the layer color on the accent lines around the head and repeat this. Finally, I'm going to fill in my existing background layer a different color. Layer masks are a slightly different approach to a similar solution to clipping masks. They keep your original layer artwork, but allow you to use a mask which controls what's visible and what's not without actually destructively editing the original artwork. I'll paint in some color for Fish Boy's fins on a new layer. Next, I'll click on the layer mask on the layers panel. That's the icon of the rectangle with a circle cut out. And you'll see a layer mask now appears beside the layer you're working on. If you select this new layer mask, you can paint directly on it. You always paint on this in black and white. Any parts that are left white, let everything show through. Any parts that are black, mask out what's on the artwork layer, and anything gray corresponds to something in between in terms of transparency. I'm using the shortcut X as well to switch between my foreground and background color. All the same principles apply in Procreate, except to create a new layer mask, select the target layer and tap on its thumbnail and select mask. A new layer mask is created above the target layer instead of beside it like in Photoshop. Select it and you can again paint in black and white to hide or show the artwork on the layer below. You can quickly edit colors you've added using clipping masks or layer masks by changing the hue, saturation, brightness. Select the color layer and hit Ctrl or Command U to bring up the panel. Hue shifts the color, saturation is how vivid or pale the color is, and lightness makes the overall color lighter or darker. Procreate works the same. Open the adjustments menu, the magic wand icon top left, and choose Hue, Saturation, Brightness. All the sliders work the same way. Here's how you can combine several of these tips into one. For this, we're going to create a quick shadow for the character. I'm going to first hide all the layers for now that don't make up the character silhouette. Select all with Ctrl or Command and A, then go to Edit, Copy Merged, or use the shortcut Command Shift C. This will copy everything visible into one layer. Paste it with Command V and we'll have a new layer with everything in it, which I'll then move below the character. I'll turn on the layers I hid a moment ago. I'll make sure I've nothing selected except the layer uh, itself by pressing Ctrl or Command D to deselect. Then transform everything using Command or Ctrl T. Holding Ctrl or Command, I'll drag the corner nodes to create roughly the shadow position I want. Next, I'll create a layer above it, fill it with black, and then I'll clip it to the layer below using Ctrl Alt G or Command Alt G. Now, if I select the layer below, I can lower its opacity on the slider at the top. I can take this a step further by creating a new layer mask and using a semi-transparent or soft brush to add a more feathered effect. In Procreate, I'll do the same. First, hide any layers that aren't part of the silhouette. Open the Actions menu, the little wrench icon, and go to Add and tap Copy Canvas, then tap Paste. This will paste new layer with all the combined artwork on it. I'll unhide all the other layers again, and with the new copied layer below the main artwork layers, I'm going to create a new layer. Fill it black and clip it to the layer below. Selecting the layer below, I'll use the Transform tool using the Stort to manipulate the layers to look like the shadow shape I want. I can tap on the Layer Blend Mode button, the little end here, to show the opacity slider, which I can lower a little bit if I want. Mm -hmm. 
Texture overlays can make a massive, massive difference to your final illustration and are incredibly simple to use. You can use any texture file really, but I'm going to use a couple that are included free with our Attack of the Liners brush sets for our Procreate in Photoshop. I'm using these ones because they're already color graded, so you can use them perfectly with literally just a couple of clicks. So go to File, Place Linked or Place Embedded, browse and select the texture file you want to use, position it where you want to cover the canvas and then hit Enter. With these textures, all you need to do is change the layer blend mode and they work great. Uh, this is on the top left, just change normal to multiply and then if you like, lower the opacity to make the effect a little more subtle. It's easy to test out different ones using this method. Also do experiment with layer blend modes as you can get some really interesting results. In Procreate, open the Actions menu, choose Insert a File, and browse and select the texture you'd like to use. Size and position it wherever you want, then turn off Transport by tapping the arrow icon. In the Layers panel, open the Layer Options by tapping N for Normal, and on the list, select Multiply. Again, experiment with different blend modes or lower the opacity to taste. So those are some of the techniques that you'll see used again and again throughout the rest of the video. The awesome Cactus illustration was done by Greenwood Media's very own Oscar, so hope you like it.